understanding where your land condition is, how well your country can respond to rain to maintain your, your pastoral enterprise is fundamental towards actually being able to manage to improve land condition and also being able to manage in terms of responding to future drought and climate events. G'day, I'm Professor David Phelps. I'm the director of the JCU hosted Tropical North Queensland Drought Resilience Adoption and Innovation Hub. The key focus of the TNQ Drought Hub is to build resilience for the agricultural industries and equally importantly, the towns and communities that rely on those agricultural industries, all the way from south of Rockhampton to the tip of the Cape and across to Camelwell. There's a lot of use of drones right across the agricultural industry at the moment. A lot of graziers and pastoralists have their own drones. A lot of natural resource management groups, state agencies and others who measure land condition now have drones. So we wanted to look at the potential to automate a drone-based image analysis of assessing land condition. Mitchell grass is a native grass to Australia. It grows across approximately 17% of, of Queensland and supports millions of, of sheep and cattle and thousands of pastoral enterprises across Queensland. So I work part-time as a project officer with Southern Gulf NRM and I'm also doing my honours in environmental science part-time through James Cook University. We fly drones on Mitchell Grass rangelands and we collect that drone imagery and we use that with machine learning to identify individual Mitchell Grass tussocks using instant segmentation, which is a form of machine learning or deep learning. There's two different scales of land condition assessment at the moment. There's satellite imagery, which is broad scale and takes a very short amount of time to collect that information because you can just log onto a website and it'll spit that information out for you. You can also do an LCAT, which is an on-ground assessment, which looks at estimation of biomass and pasture cover. That takes a little bit longer, but it's a really detailed assessment, but it's only in a small spatial scale. Drones allow us to use something that people already have and take really high resolution imagery of grass, of Mitchell grass tussocks, and at a fairly quick scale. So our study is based in the Mitchell grass rangelands of the southern gulf of northwest Queensland. So we have some properties in McKinlay, Julia Creek and near Hewenden where we've taken some imagery. So on a typical day out in the field we'll go out, we'll set up our RTK equipment. This allows us to take really accurate um, information about the location of where we're sampling. We then lay out ground control points which are one by one metre squares and then we fly our drone at 25 metres elevation for ground sampling distance, which allows us to get really high resolution imagery. So we take lots of photos of these Mitchell grass tussocks and we feed those photos into the Maxis AI platform. Then David Phelps and I circle around each individual tussock and we train the model to be able to identify Mitchell grass tussocks by itself. Um, I'm Glenn, I'm a founder of Maxis AI. Mexus AI is an AI platform um, to help um, business experts to use artificial intelligence to analyze images, videos and satellite footage. When it comes to AI, uh, we always treat it like, with a mindset of like, it's, it's still a child. Um, it still needs to learn a lot and we still need to teach it and um, hence, it's not a sequential process. It's not like, um, okay, here's some data, here's what you should learn, we, you train it and then off you go and you do your thing. No, it's not. Um, there is still always the human um, in the loop, um, providing feedback and making sure that it's um, supposed to do what it's supposed to do. When we started, um, we would never thought of that we actually would do something in agriculture and especially detecting and counting Mitchell grass. Um, and that's sort of the beauty of a um, great technology is like when it's so universal that it can apply it in things you haven't thought of yet. The results we found so far uh, we're able to identify Mitchell grass tussocks which is the whole point of the project so that's really exciting. Uh, we can basically put in an image of from the drone and ask how many tussocks are in this picture or how many tussocks per meter squared are in this image and it will tell you exactly how many in that image and then we can look at that per site and then that will give you an answer about the land condition assessment. So if there's two to three tussocks per metre squared, that'll represent a good condition. Something under than 0.1 tussocks per metre squared will 
represent a poor condition. So that can inform stocking densities, um, it'll help to um, inform carrying capacities of um, paddocks as well. We see now that these type of approaches can also be applied for the data in Australia, for agriculture and the land in Australia, for example, um, to create a foundational model based on all the land types and all the land conditions we want to monitor. And uh, then, the, then do all sorts of cool things like detecting erosion before it happens or um, very early on um, so that we can prevent it um, at a much cheaper cost when in doing a big project when it's too late. Um, or monitor mangroves um, and see whether they are changing, whether they're actually dying, and to prevent and do something to help them um, stay healthy. AI is used in so many different applications. It can be used to pick up prickly acacia trees, it can be used to pick up water troughs, and we're hoping to extend that. What really matters is that there is innovation, that graziers, pastoralists, within our region, right across Australia, can see the value of using different types of technology. And the only way that we will ensure that the best use is being made of tech and innovation is by bringing everyone together, the actual technology providers, the landholders themselves, uh, those involved in talking about how good the product is, for instance, all together to work collaboratively and collectively for useful solutions. And to me, what's absolutely fantastic is that it has worked. That's what really matters. It's worked and we can see that there's a useful gain in terms of better efficiency, more accurate estimation of land condition, and it's really brought everything together and created what I think is a really exciting product for the future.